We are here on All-Star Tuesday, Major League Baseball All-Star Tuesday. Uh, we're in Nationals Park tonight. Uh, we uh, we hope to see as an exciting an event as we saw last night in the Home Run Derby. And I'm not just saying that because the man who's sitting right here to my left, Al Leiter of MLB Network, will be joining me here in a moment. We've already had two, not one, but two Hall of Fame catchers, Johnny Bench and Pudge Rodriguez here uh, in studio. But I want to turn to my left right here to lead off hour number three of, as I said, day number two of the Rich Eisen Show here in uh, Washington, D.C., home of the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. The commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, kind enough to uh, be here on the program once again. Good to see you here, Commissioner. Good to be here. You Good got to it. be here. Now, before we get into uh, uh, business of baseball, I, I, you, I, I'd love to give you the, the platform for my man, Mike Del Tufo, over there wearing the Bryce <laughs> Harper uh, headgear from last night. You had a couple of things you wanted to point out to him uh, when you got out here on the set. Well, you know, I, I, I sat in the green room and I was watching the show. And yes. um, in the half hour I saw, uh -oh. um, he was one and two was my evaluation. He gets a point, a win. Okay for not taking his shirt off. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that was a W. It's W for everyone involved. I agree. Actually. I uh, agree. Yeah, there was the the shirtless photograph of Dan Patrick and Chris wow. Brockman and the rest of the crew. That's okay. I'll Un take that win. Unfortunately, okay. I had to hang two L's on him. Um, one was the NFL shirt. Um, <laughs> oh, plenty my. of Major League Baseball <laughs> merchandise available here in D.C., but I'm going to send him some free ones. Okay, because so, uh, well, now you're uh, talking his oh, language. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah uh -huh. I'm in. Now okay, you're sending so, him, he, he, yeah, you're talking his language. And then the last one, I, I don't want to dwell on. I did see the home run derby segment. Mm -hmm. Got to work on the swing. Yeah, there's some work that needs to <laughs> okay. be done there. Okay. The old Walt yeah. Hereniak videos we can get for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Tom Amansky. <laughs> Tom Amansky, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> right. If you missed any of that, you could see it on our app. Uh, and, uh, and it's great to see you here. Um, what was that like for you, seeing that home run derby? Well, you know, it, it, it was really funny. You, you, you plan, and, you know, I think one of the keys for us in the Derby, it's great to have a hometown player mm -hmm. who's, you know, deep into the Derby. That's a great thing we always hope for because it's great for the fans, and, and, and that's what the Derby's about, being good for the fans. Right. Uh, but I'll tell you, when he got down to 115, one minute, I thought, oh, man, this script has worked perfect till now, but he's just not going to get there. And, man, that last minute or so was something special, really something special. Yes, I think he, let me get the exact numbers here. Um, he hit um, six home runs in the final 29 seconds, yeah. nine home runs in the final 47 seconds. The whole place lit up. I mean, that was something else. Uh, are, do you guys in the front office of be baseball reach out personally to some of these so-called, if you will, stars of the game to say, would you participate? Do you we do, actively do that? We do personally. We work through the clubs. You know, the closest relationship you always got to remember is between the club and the player. And the Nationals were phenomenal in terms of working with Bryce. It started over a year ago. He started saying he was going to do it. And it's really important. I guess the second thing I'd say about last night, you know, um, we went to the new format with the clock and, yeah. and, and everything in 2015. And you've I've talked about that before. But um, since that new format, we've kept track of how many home runs got hit. There were 18 more last night than have ever been hit in a home run derby, which talks about the quality of the performances all mm. the way up and down. I mean, the, the guys that agreed to participate were enthusiastic. They put on a great show, and we had the most ever um, home runs in rounds two and three. And, you know, it does get harder. I mean, you do get right. exhausted just from sw all, all, all the swinging. So it was a great show all the way around. Hats off to all the players who participated. Well, I mean, the, the, in terms of the name players, I mean, obviously if you want, you want to get as many people out and that's not, and I, I understand that that is disrespectful to the guys who do put their bats in their hands right. and compete. But I mean, if you want to get some of these all-stars that are pl playing tonight, don't you want them in, in Look, the, in the we, home run derby? Obviously, we'd like to have the highest profile players that, that, that we could have. Um, but, you know, you also want guys who are going to put on a good show, and there's two elements to that. There's particular kinds of hitters. Mm -hmm. I think Schwarber would be an example, who are inclined. You know, they're going to put on a good show. And then the other thing that's really interesting, I think players who really want to be in the event, and, it, and you know, it says something about athletics generally, I think, mm -hmm. just tend to really perform. I, I, I think uh, Hoskins is a great example of it. Um, he, mm -hmm. he wanted to be in the event, and, you know, he put on a good show. Uh, Commissioner Rob Manfred here. And I did notice last night, Commissioner, because, um, you know, I try to have a keen interest in everything, uh, the young men and women who are shagging uh, fly balls, they did appear to be shifted. 
there did appear to be <laughs> there a was shift. some shifting. There was going. some shifting. You know, I noticed that as well. The <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, they were all bunched up yep. on one side of the field. Well, it seems to be the trend, right? Yes. Thirty-six thousand pitches this year. <laughs> you'll see the shift. That's your number. Uh, 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 that's what I want to. That's what I kind of want to hit this thing because this is a windmill I'm trying to tilt at right here. It drives me nuts. I think it takes offense out of the game. And if I may just remain on my soapbox a little bit longer, I think it has added to more strikeouts that I think a lot of guys are trying to hit it over the shift. And it takes offense out of the game. I'm wondering if there is any appetite from your position to put a rule out there to get rid of the shift. Well, you know, I promised Pat Courtney, our yes. PR director, that I would not get into individual rule changes today. But let me say this, and okay. I, I do think it's important. I, I think there's a consensus, a growing consensus among ownership that we need, need to have a serious dialogue with the players that goes beyond pace of play and talks about the way the game is being played on the field. Um, and I, I think that there's been a lot of, um, I call it organic change, you know, changes that have been driven by general managers and managers trying to win two, one or two more games. Um, it has changed the way the game looks on the field, and I think we need to have a conversation uh, about whether or not it's time to intercede and manage that change a little more aggressively. Shifts are at the top of a lot of people's lists. Yeah, it's, they're certainly at the top of mine. I asked A.J. Hinch, uh, who is obviously uh, – somebody who uses it quite a bit and is an analytics uh, centric, uh, mm -hmm. although a guy who just, you know, manages from the gut as well. That's why he's obviously so successful so and is your, <laughs> right. is the world series defending champion manager. If he would have an appetite for a rule and he said, absolutely not. Like he was telling me to basically go pound sand on this idea. Yeah. I think that um, the counter argument is that, um, we've never gotten into defensive positioning and you know, it would be a, a, a big change. And, and I think the other concern that people have is how predictable will the outcome be? So let's start with shifts, right? Sure. So when shifts started to become more and more prevalent, everybody said, don't worry about it. You know, the, the, these are the greatest athletes in the world. They're going to adjust and everybody assumed the adjustment would be, we'll hit it the other way right? Yeah. To the open part of the field. Well, they were right on one and two. They are the greatest athletes in the world. They did adjust. Unfortunately, the adjustment they made is I'm going to try to hit everything up over the top, right? I'm going to hit over the shift. And why? Why? Because analytics told them that the value of getting that home run in terms of producing a win is higher than hitting to the opposite field. So when you start making these rules, you have to really think through carefully. You want to manage the game. You want to keep the game entertaining for the fans. But you really have to think through carefully what the outcome is really going to be and whether you're going to get the outcome you want. Well, I'd, again, at the risk of uh, potentially upsetting our, our, our friend Pat Courtney, who is the best at what he does in this business, and I'm not just saying that to butter you up because I'm about to ask the commissioner of the rules related question. <laughs> but uh, Tony Clark, the MLB uh, Players Association chief, said that there is, as he said, gaining momentum for designated hitter in the National League. Would you agree with that assessment, that that's gaining momentum? Yeah, you know, somebody read that quote to me. We did back-to-backs with the um, Press baseball writers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my impression – and maybe this is me overestimating my ability to make deals, has always been since 1987 that if I want to make a deal with the MLBPA about spreading the DH to the National League, that deal was out there to be had. So I, the fact that he's saying it's something new surprises me a little bit. But the substantive position does not. I think players in general have been in favor uh, of the designated hitter. So that, that's not a big surprise. Um, I, I'm not sure... Um, in this overall conversation, whether the DH should or shouldn't play a major role, the expansion of the DH. I do know this. Um, you know, there is a brand of baseball played in the National League that's only played in the National League now. And to move the designated hitter over there and make that brand of baseball extinct, I think we're going to have to think carefully about that before mm, we make that move. It's a very traditionalist approach right there. Yeah, every once in a while, even I slip into it. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, you got to cater to everybody. But, um, you know, I'm not sure it's the answer. But I, 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 I am um, committed to the idea 
that we need to be having a conversation, including obviously the people who play the game on the field, the players. We've been after Tony to get at this conversation. Um, and it, I don't think about it as, you know, Rob Manfred's out there trying to change the game or the owners are out there trying to change the game. I think about it as the game's changing, it's changing organically, and are we just going to let that happen or are we going to manage the outcome in order to preserve a game that we all love that's a great game, has great bones, and to enhance its entertainment value for the fans. Well, I'm going to take a break, if you don't mind, or stick around uh, before sure. Al Lider joins us. Uh, a couple of items I do want to hit. Uh, you know, Tony Clark did have a couple other things to say. I want to okay. bounce off you. I'm sure you've heard what he had to say. Um, and we got a couple of calls um, from our radio affiliate in Portland, interested uh -huh. in potentially what's going on in that city, uh, along with another pace of play uh, question that I have okay. for you. All right, so Just great. laying that all out for Commissioner Rob Manfred before Al Leiter joins us here live on the Rich Eisen Show, Don't You Dare Move. Welcome back to our show here. I, I, we just found out. So Commissioner Rob Manfred, you and I covered, that we're at the same first All-Star game together? Mine no, was first my first one was, was actually 89 at Wrigley. Pat, when was the last one in Wrigley? 89? 89? 89. That was my first one. And, and then you were working I, in what capacity were you working? I was an outside lawyer, and I started going then. Okay. And we represented baseball, and then at 97. In the, Colorado. In Colorado, I decided to go in-house. That's where we had conversations during that All-Star game. That's when I decided. That was my first one I covered for ESPN, um, and the – the most memorable one for me uh, that I brought up several times, and I will do so again because I brought it up because Pedro was on yesterday right. and Pudge was on today, and that was the battery of the first two innings for the American League in the 1999 All-Star Game when my job as the studio host for ESPN radio coverage of the event mm -hmm. was to be on the field behind home plate and describe the action of the All-Century team. It was unbelievable. Oh, my God. It was a great moment, a great baseball moment. And, you know, for all the hard work that went into the great staging of the event, the best part of it was the players' reaction to Ted Williams. The current players. I mean, just a phenomenal moment. Because I, I, and I'll say it again, I'll never forget how every player converged on the pitcher's mound to get a piece of Ted Williams yeah. if they could. Yep. And when they couldn't get to Ted, I look up, and there's Randy Johnson talking to Sandy Koufax. There's McGuire with Stan Musial. I mean, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. And then the public address announcer in Rig in uh, Fenway uh -huh. essentially told him to break it up. We got to start the game. <laughs> we got to get going. Yeah, we got to get going. <laughs> and I asked Pedro about that yesterday, and he's like, normally not getting out to the um, to the bullpen to warm up for regular season, it would have pissed him off. It would really piss me off. But instead, he just he wanted to be part of it. Like, kind of got upset him that he had to go warm right, up. Right, had to, to go warm up. Right. And I remember again, I, I was there with my wife, who's a big, you know, from big New England family. And I turned on, like, you know, there's there's no way that this game is going to top that. And then the first two innings happened, right, where he struck out five of the first six, and the only one, the only out that wasn't recorded by strikeout was our second hour guest, Pudge Rodriguez, throwing Matt Williams out trying to steal. Um, after that, then I turned around, I'm like, okay, now this game will probably be anticlimactic. And there, there was no, I mean, there's nothing. The home run derby, too, where McGuire hit all those home runs with a broken bat. Didn't win. He, right. he, he didn't right. win the derby, right? It was, <laughs> yeah, but Ted Williams was there that night, and I was part of the coverage. Me and Stuart Scott were, were, were splitting up the, uh, the coverage. That was unbelievable. Yeah, it was a great, great night. Uh, it, it, Boston, you know, did a phenomenal job, um, excuse me, with that all-star game. And. The All Century team was a, you know, great pregame show. Uh, really a great. Pre -game. It was. It was. I don't know how you can. I mean, you can. You can't do it. I've, obviously, there's only a century comes once every hundred years. Right. But that right. was that was really uh, special. Yeah, Kevin Costner was the MC of it too. Right. It was great. Uh, Rob Manfred here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. A couple of things <laughs> uh, coming from uh, the Rich Eisen Show radio affiliate uh, in Portland, uh, Rip City uh, Radio 620. We got a. I had a caller call in yesterday. He was watching a minor league game and uh, he, with his family, and all of a sudden they put a, sec, a runner on second to start extra innings. He said he loved it. He yeah. said he absolutely loved it, and that it added a different level of intrigue. H how is that? How is that? Because I know that's a pace of play right. rule that you've been putting into well, place. It's for, interesting. It's a pilot program. That one is a rule that morphed on us a little bit. Okay. Um, it was originally out there um, 
as and you know came sort of out of international baseball. We used it in the WBC, and it was a mechanism to try to complete games without going 18 innings, particularly in an event like the WBC where you had pitch limitations. Right, you go 18 innings, guys pitch a lot. You know, you're left with no pitchers. It's it's really a problem. So we used it there. Um, I saw it a couple times. It was very exciting. And then there was some talk about it, and we backed away from it a little bit. Um, became, I said publicly, that I didn't think it was a rule that we were going to use at the major league level. And then it kind of got re- resurrected at, uh, for use in the minor leagues from uh, with a push from the development people, right? And and you know one of the important issues in the developing young players and pitchers in particular is pitch counts. You know, in those 18 inning games, they they mess the you, you know you need people to pitch, and it gets pitchers out of whack. They were concerned that it might be causing injuries, and so they've gone to it in the minor leagues, and it's actually been pretty positively received. Yeah, guy called in said it was great, just yeah. that the strategies changed and right. There's this whole issue. You, know, you put somebody on second, are you going to do a bunt and right. try to or do you try to get a base hit? It it, it is interesting. But, it is interesting. But moving it to the major league level, is... I'm still kind of a, a no on that. I think that you know there's a certain when the games matter so much and they don't have that you know developmental purpose like you have in the minor leagues, I think the scale kind of tips the other way on that. And what about the possibility of Major League Baseball in Portland, Oregon? Where does that stand? Look, we're lucky. Um, I I mean, I I would say this. Big picture, we need to get Oakland and uh, Tampa Bay squared away before we talk about expansion. But I think we will get them squared away. I think we will ultimately have a, a conversation about expansion, and we're blessed. We have a number of markets, Portland, Las Vegas, Nashville, Charlotte, that are viable, interested. You know, we're blessed. And that's not even to talk about, you know, Montreal, maybe someplace in Mexico, all of which would be possible um, and and probably viable in terms of the demographics of the markets. Um, so we're, we're lucky in that regard. A lot of interest in Major League Baseball. So in terms of Portland, you're, you're viewing that as a, an expansion city possibility? Not yeah, a, we, a, we never talk about um, cities as relocation sure. alternatives. You know, we, we've had a great record of not relocating franchises. We have deep ties with the communities where we play. And um, I, I really am hopeful that both Oakland and Tampa Bay figure it out where they are. A couple more minutes left here with Rob Manfred, uh, the commissioner of baseball. Tony Clark, the union chief, I'll read the direct quote. What the players saw last offseason was that their free agent rights were under attack attack on what has been the bedrock of our system. How do you respond to that? Uh, You know, um, I think uh, that's inaccurate hyperbole, to tell you the truth. I think if you look at the market um, in retrospect um, and you look at the performance of the players so far this year, what happened last year is our clubs made really sound evaluations of players, what could reasonably be expected from them in terms of performance, and the market operated based on um, those judgments. I think at the end of the year, you go back and look at the statistics, you're going to decide that the clubs did a pretty good job figuring out um, how these available players were going to perform this year. And how do you view, how do, from a commissioner's office, um, uh, a trade uh, of someone like Manny Machado, which is r- rumored to be going down tomorrow, a, a top young player going from a, a team here on the Mid-Atlantic potentially to... Uh, a squad that made the World Series last year. How do you view? Look, like that, I see it as um, a prudent business decision on the part of the trading club. Um, I think that the, the you know you got half a season left. Um, you look at how the clubs performed. Um, you're probably not going to win the World Series. Um, you're looking down the barrel at free agency, where you know whether or not the player is going to be there is his decision, not yours. Um, and the opportunity to give up three or four months of performance and in return get some high-quality prospects that helps you rebuild your team seems like it makes sense. To okay. Me. Before you go, how would you rate the pace of this interview? <laughs> how would you? You're, you are rarely boring, Rich. I okay. will give you that. Okay. okay. <laughs> rarely boring. Good okay. pace. Okay. Uh, good pace. Yep. Good crisp. 
Yeah, really enjoyable. It's always a pleasure to be here. I mean that. Okay, so the quality of the interview too, pace and quality, uh, yeah, outstanding. I, okay. I, I would say this segment yes. was a lot better than the shirts off and the wiffle ball that were in the last segment. Mm. So I think we improved the content. Okay, we okay. improved it. We upped the content. <laughs> yeah. We improved we it. Wow. We did. Uh, enjoy tonight. All right, I will. Enjoy I will. tonight. I always appreciate you making time. For it's the great show. to see you. You got it right there. Okay, uh, and uh, XL for yeah, for, your, for your XL. for your MLB yeah. gear. I'll tell you what, we'll, you know, just to be safe, we'll send you a couple in each size. Each Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the drawstring. Wow. He's going to send you the drawstring stuff oh, from the man, 70s. The old, he's so going to go, he's gonna go throwback. Thank you. Commissioner Rob Manfred, thank you, sir. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.